Good evening. Today we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to make sure all cell phones are silenced. In compliance with guidelines to maintain the health of our community, we respectfully ask that the congregation please remain silent during the singing of all the hymns throughout the Mass. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ann E. Jones. Please stand now as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My friends, the readings today wrestle with the questions of who is in and who is out. When it comes to God's grace, who will receive it? We learn that all who accept the gift of faith are incorporated into the covenant relationship with God. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide, O oh God. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him, O oh God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to a disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. 
But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm the kind of guy who likes to mark time. I tend to look at what's come before to help order what is to come. So when I sat down to prepare my homily, this all came kind of flowing into me. I was thinking about it, it's been nearly seven months since I last delivered a homily on a deacon preaching Sunday. It's been about six months since I've been able to stand out there in the narthex and greet you or fist bump you or do that bro hug thing as you came in and out of church. It's been a little more than two months since we've been allowed to take those tentative first steps to resuming public masses. And it's been about five weeks since Father Mel joined us as our new pastor. I guess it's a good thing that I have this time marking disposition, being a deacon and all, because the church is really the, the queen of marking time with the four-week psalter and the liturgy of the hours, the three-year cycle of Sunday readings, the recurring seasons of Advent and Christmas, Lent and Easter, and then the feasts and solemnities that we observe throughout the year. The beautiful thing is that these cycles, while some might think they're a routine, these cycles actually accentuate the newness of God's word. I don't need to tell you that our ears and our hearts that heard these readings today are far, far different from our ears and hearts that heard these same readings three years ago. The word is eternal and unchanging as well as ever new. Three years ago, we weren't in the grip of a deadly pandemic that has ended, or at least very much upended, countless lives across our nation and our world. Three years ago, most of us probably had not felt compelled to encounter the very real question of just what is the state of racial equality and social justice in our country. Yet, here we all are. Like it or not, for good or for ill, we cannot help but be changed by what's been going on in the world, and that has a profound influence on how we receive God's word. Today's gospel is often thought of as being one of those difficult gospels. Why was Jesus so harsh to that lady, we wonder? Her poor suffering daughter was in need of help, yet Jesus remained silent and his disciples just wanted her to go away. Where is the love there? Yes, Jesus eventually heals the girl and praises the woman's faith, but we can't just dismiss those questions that we had and dismiss our discomfort because the story has a happy ending. Jesus was calling on the disciples then, as he calls upon us now, into the heart of the matter, which is God's eternal plan that every person, every nation on earth, should be one in him. In our present day, we have so much strife and division, so many people dividing up the world into us and to them. It's important to remember, though, that this element of our broken human nature has been with us since the fall of Adam and Eve. And we can see it even on display in the Gospel reading today. We're told that Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And to say that he withdrew suggests he needed to get away for a bit. And that was truly the case. Where he and the disciples went was the farthest point north that Jesus travels in any of the Gospels. And it's the farthest away from Jerusalem that he could get. Yes, he was attracting larger and larger crowds of people who were hungry for his authentic teaching. But at the same time, he was making the scribes and Pharisees increasingly hostile towards him, toward this man whose teaching they saw as a threat to their authority. 
Interestingly, the Jesus who said that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, he chose to withdraw into the pagan lands of the Phoenicians and the Canaanites, people who weren't even part of the house of Israel, let alone merely lost sheep. The people of the land would have viewed these traveling Israelites with suspicion, and you can be sure that Jesus' companions would have viewed these pagans in the same way, or even worse. Yet here we have this Canaanite woman who in her need recognizes who Jesus is and what he's capable of doing. How else would she have known to beg for his help? How else would she have known to call him son of David? In this, we have the fulfillment of the prophecy given through Isaiah in our first reading, when we hear that the Lord's salvation will stretch beyond the Jews to every nation. Jesus knew this woman. He knew what was in her heart. He knew that he would cure her daughter. His initial silence in response to her pleas were followed by his statement that he only came to minister to the lost sheep of Israel. And that, in turn, was followed by a reference to the dogs that clearly would have resonated with his disciples as being in line with the disparaging way that observant Jews might have regarded the pagans. But Jesus did none of this to humiliate the Canaanite woman, no. In doing what he did, Jesus, I think, was drawing his disciples into their well-practiced way of inward-looking thinking, of identifying themselves as special, both collectively as part of God's chosen people, Israel, and individually as the hand-picked companions of this greatest of teachers. But instead of reinforcing this self-isolating identity that excludes other people, he pulled the rug out from under them by drawing out from the woman a heartfelt and unequivocal proclamation of faith from this person who they would have dismissed otherwise as being the other. He pulled out this pure proclamation of faith that pulled them up short. In last week's gospel, we had Peter, the head of these chosen ones, being asked by Jesus, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And in today's gospel, this seeming outsider is celebrated by Jesus with the words, O oh, woman, great is your faith. In this, Jesus shows up the absurdity of that unthinking tribal us versus them mentality. It's what's in your heart, not where you're from, that ultimately matters. There will be a separating that takes place at the last judgment, but it will be based on our faith and works rather than our address or our social status. St. Paul tells us today, God delivered all to disobedience, that he might be merciful to all. There's not one of us here today that has not sinned, but there's also not one of us here who has not received God's mercy. God doesn't bestow his mercy on us without expecting that we, in turn, show mercy to those around us, and not just to those who are close to us, but also to those who are alien to us, those who we might view as the, the Canaanites of our own time. And at our final judgment, God will ask us what our standard of mercy was in this world, and he'll apply that same standard to us. Jesus is calling each of us to journey with him to Tyre and Sidon, to a discipleship that exposes and erases the boundaries set in place by others and the boundaries we place on ourselves. He calls us to a discipleship that is willing to go past those boundaries and to bring a lived out gospel message of faith, hope, and love to everyone we encounter. That kind of discipleship is a challenge, especially when we acknowledge our own imperfections and weaknesses. But Jesus doesn't make that calling and then leave us to our own devices. We're very, so very blessed to have the sacraments so close at hand. We can gain so much healing through the sacrament of confession and so much strength through the Eucharist we're about to receive. If each of us here could be that kind of disciple Jesus is calling us to be to even one person in this coming week, think how many lives would be touched and how much healing could begin. God will give us the grace to be that disciple. Let us pray that our hearts will be open to receiving it.
Let us now stand and together profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the Lord there is mercy and redemption. Confident in his providential care for us, we humbly present our prayers and petitions to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Gregory, and all the church's ministers, that they will be faithful and loving stewards of the gospel, ever bearing witness to the fullness of the truth in word and action, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we will embrace Christ's call to love one another as he loves us through service to our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For communities throughout the world that have been impacted by violence, that God will heal the wounded, console the grieving, and free all who are living in fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people, as we approach the beginning of another school year, that in this time of great uncertainty, they will be guided by the Holy Spirit along the path of wisdom, no matter what the format of their opportunities for learning may be, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will strengthen all caregivers, heal the sick, guide researchers, and lift up those who are weighed down by the challenges of these times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, injured, and homebound, that they will experience the peace and strength of God's healing love, especially Rita Livernois, Stephen Heidenberger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will come to share eternal life with Christ in the kingdom of heaven, especially Eugene Pastor and Catherine Ann Olivario, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we have faith that you turn your eyes to look upon us. We ask you to hear our prayers and grant them if they be in accord with your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and through the intercession of Our Lady as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. The offertory collection will not be taken up at this time for the health and safety of our parishioners and ushers. At the conclusion of Mass, on your way out, please drop your offertory envelopes in the baskets provided near the back of the church. Thank you for your generosity.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admins to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen.
blood of Christ. Amen. We welcome all Catholics present who are in a state of grace to receive Holy Communion at this time. Those who have health concerns and do not wish to receive sacramental communion may make an act of spiritual communion. As a reminder, when you come forward in procession for Holy Communion, please come forward in a single file, maintaining social distance, that is six feet from others. Approach the next available communion minister when it is your time to receive the sacred host. Keep your mask on and remain six feet away. When they show the host and say the body of Christ, respond amen and then approach the minister. Place one hand under the other, receive the host, then step six feet away. Then carefully loosen your facial covering, consume the host and replace your facial covering. For the faithful who wish to receive Holy Communion on the tongue, I kindly ask that you please receive from Deacon Steve. Deacon's communion station will be located by the statue of St. Andrew. Deacon will be the only minister to administer Holy Communion on the tongue. After each communicant, Deacon will disinfect his hands for those who receive on the tongue, even if no physical contact is made. Thank you for your patience and cooperation.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.